Hello and welcome to this webinar from the Strength to Food project. Strength to Food is an EU-funded Horizon 2020 project which addresses public sector food procurement, short food supply chains and food quality schemes. I'm Matthew Gorton, the coordinator. Today we're going to look at some of the consumer research findings from the project. And this element of the work has been led by Professor Monica Hartman from the University of Bonn, who we're going to hear from in a moment. She'll be giving a presentation on the key findings. During the presentation, you can ask questions using the Ask the Question box, and we'll deal with the questions at the end. We hope you enjoy the webinar, and thank you for joining us. So, welcome also to, from my side to the Strength to Food webinar, Food Quality Labels, do they matter for consumers? Empirical results from a pan-European study and policy recommendations. The webinar has been jointly prepared by Xing Ye and myself, but there's research from a team from seven different countries involved. And you see the names of the contributors at the bottom of this slide. So let us go to the agenda of today's webinar. I'd like to start with the point labels as a solution for the lemon problem. The main part of the webinar will deal with the results of two pan-European surveys which we carried out in the Strength to Food project. And the guiding questions will be what do consumers actually care about? Are labels effective in informing consumers? And can we improve label perception? I will conclude with some policy recommendations. According to neoclassical economics, consumer preferences drive purchase decision and consumption decision. But this actually assumes that consumers are able to make informed choices, which however is not always the case. If you just think at the complexity of products which we do have on the markets today, which are characterized by a lot of process characteristics such as organic, animal-friendly production or regional. And if you buy a piece of meat, you might have a high degree of information asymmetry, not really knowing whether the product has been produced organic, animal-friendly, or in what region. Producers, on the other hand, might have this information. Consumers can search, but even in times of Web 2.0, Search is costly with respect to time, effort, and money. Thus, for food markets differentiated by process characteristics, we have the classical lemon problem, as we have information asymmetry between producers and consumers. Thus, labels that are backed up by quality standards and third-party controlled can be a means to ease informed choice on the side of consumers. There are some open questions, however. For which product characteristics do we need labels? What do consumers actually care about is in this respect the interesting questions. And are labels, which are on the market, actually effective in informing consumers? Finally, can we improve label perception? For finding answers to these questions, we carried out two pan-European surveys in seven countries France, Italy, Germany, Hungary, Norway, United Kingdom, and Serbia. The first survey was carried out in September, October 2017 in these seven countries, and in each country we had about a sample size of 800. The second survey was carried out about a year later, again about the same sample size per country, all seven countries were included. And we did a best worst scaling experiment to answer the first questions. We looked at four EU quality labels and 14 national and regional quality labels to find answers to the second question. And finally, we combined the first and the second survey to find answers to the third question, how we can improve label perception. Now let's move to the first questions, which the leading question would be, what do consumers actually care about? And we did an in-depth analysis with respect to cheese over all seven countries included in the survey. And as already mentioned, 
We did this by using best worst scaling experiments. We looked at a total of 14 attributes and we asked how important are the following criteria for you when buying cheese. Consumers or respondents did see this picture with, with the cheese in the top and they were asked uh, for each choice set to respond to five attributes at a time. And the interesting point was that they had to indicate what, which of those attributes is least important or most important. For example, it could be that giving the five attributes uh, revealed here, brand is the least important and the nutritional value of the product the most important. A total of six choice sets were answered by each of the respondents. We, however, did not just look at cheese, but we made sure that we looked at at least two other products in each country. And we also made sure that each product was at least covered by two countries, for example, fresh meat by France and the UK, or fresh vegetables by Germany, Hungary, and Italy. So let us first concentrate on our results regarding cheese. We looked at the so-called important scores, which we derived from the best was scaling experiment and the important scores have the advantage that they add up to 100, the normalized important scores add up to 100 over all 14 attributes. Just if we think about it, if all attributes have the same importance for consumers, the average scale would be 7.1. But how is it with respect to cheese? We see there's quite a bit of difference in importance between the different product attributes with taste of the product being by far the most important one, having an important score of 19. Price takes the second place. We see other characteristics such as best before dates are as well above average and then there are some which are below average. Now, we also see with this slide that there are considerable differences in attribute importance between countries when buying cheese. And we might just want to focus on one of these attributes to visualize this a little bit clearer. Let's look at products country of origin. Here we do see that this attribute is quite important for Italy with a attribute score of 8.2, but it's rather of low importance for Serbia with attribute score of 2.8. This, however, does not mean that in other countries, but Italy or France, which also has rather high values here, country or region of origin is of little importance. We actually do find segments in several countries for which country and region of origin play a role. And you see this with these little pieces of cakes that this holds for France, Hungary, Italy, and the United Kingdom. So you see that those shares for which population shares for which these uh, characteristics are important differ in size. And you can also see, and uh, this is at the example of Hungary and Italy, that also the absolute attribute importance differs. So if, for example, for Hungary, on average for the population, seven is the important scores, for the segments, it is 23, so a much higher one. The same for Italy, the average is 15 over the whole group of respondents from Italy, and for the segment, it's 31. We also see that there are other segments for which it is very important, for which uh, specific characteristics are very important. So the segment two refers to natural and traditional and covers organic, GMO-free, animal welfare and traditional. And you see in six countries we find segments with similar preference concerning these kind of attributes. Uh, we also have segments which care more about appearance, freshness, price and so on. But we don't want to concentrate on that at this point. So, so far the results refer to cheese. Let's have a look, a quick look when we move on and consider all products which we investigated. And again, looking at the important scores, we do see that taste is the most important attribute. Best before date and freshness take second place and a price third place. So we have not the same 
results as for cheese, but similar results as for cheese. We see considerable differences in attribute importance between different product categories and just look at best before date, which is of high importance for fish, but it's of little importance or relative lower importance for cheese. So what do consumers care about? We can derive some first conclusions. Product taste is the most important attribute for consumers and price often takes second place. Relevance of other attributes, however, depends on product type and country. And we do find considerable differences in consumer preferences between countries. Interesting, however, we also find the existence of segments with rather similar preferences over countries, such as segments which care quite a bit about traditional natural products. In six of the seven countries, we find such a segment. Um, segments which care a lot about national and regional products, and we find four segments of in the seven countries which care about that. These are, however, product characteristics which are linked to a high degree of information asymmetry, and so food quality labels are important for such product characteristics. This leads us to our second question. Are the labels which are existing right now in the market effective in informing consumers? And we looked at recognition and use of labels as well as of uh, we looked at perception of labels. And uh, we investigate a total of four EU quality labels, the protected designation of origin, the protected geographic indication, the traditional speciality guaranteed, and the EU organic label. On the other hand, we looked at 40 national and regional labels. We had two labels per country, which we investigated. How did we investigate whether consumers recognize labels. We just showed them the label and asked them, do you recognize this label? And they could answer with yes or no. And if we look at the percentage of those who answered yes, we see that this percentage is much higher for national labels than for the four EU labels. The national labels here are aggregated over the 14 labels, which I revealed to you just a second earlier. And you see that recognition for those labels is 64%, while it varies between 18 and 34% for the EU quality labels. We do see considerable difference in recognition between EU and national labels, even if we look at the same area, which is indicated by the label, organic. So here we see for three countries for which we also had national labels, national organic labels in our analysis, we reveal the recognition of the EU organic label. And here in comparison, you see the recognition of the respective national label in the different countries. And you see it's uh, much, much higher, 42 versus 93%. Considerable differences in recognition of EU labels we also find by country. So, for example, here you see that the PGI is recognized in Norway by 7% of the respondents, while it is recognized by 70% in Italy, so a much, much higher level. We also see considerable differences in recognition of national labels. That's an important point, because it's not that all national labels are well recognized. So, for example, the Norwegian national label, which refers to the geographic indication, is only recognized by 8% of the respondents from Norway, while the German organic label is recognized almost by everyone with 98%. We were not just interested to know whether people recognize, but also to what extent they use a label while doing their grocery shopping. So we asked, to what extent do you take this label into account when you do your grocery shopping? And Respondents said the possibility to answer never, almost never, sometimes, almost every time and every time. We looked at the uh, three last answer categories and considered those as examples for that consumers use the label. And we were interested in how many of those recognizing a label 
at least sometimes use it when doing their grocery shopping. What we see on average about 70% of those recognizing a label takes a label at least sometimes into account when doing their grocery shopping. We do see some differences between labels, but uh, more or less it is these 70%. Interesting is in addition to look at what is the perception of a label. So we had questions um, where we showed the label and indicated that there are several statements concerning the perception of the label and respondents were able to say on a scale from one to five whether they agree or they don't agree to a specific statement. And as statement, we had the following. The label is easy to understand. The label has a clear logo symbol. The label is attractive. The label is more than just a means of advertising. The label is trustworthy. The label helps me to make an informed choice. And to come back to the beginning, especially the letter is what we actually want. We want that the label is supportive for consumers in helping them to make an informed choice. We measured perception on the, with the net agreement indicator, which has a scale from plus 100 to minus 100, with plus 100 indicating very high agreement and minus 100 very low agreement. And what we do see when we look now at the four EU labels, we do see that there is a slightly positive perception of all EU labels, but the organic label. The organic label is here indicated by the green line, and you see it's sometimes going below the zero line. So it's even sometimes negatively perceived with respect to some of the statements. National organic labels are in contrast positive perceived. So what we compare here again are the three countries which we mentioned before, France, Germany, and Serbia, for which we have information also on the perception of national labels. And we do see a much higher perception of the national label than the EU label in the three countries here investigated. We also have considerable differences in label perception between countries. And this is indicated here for the first statement, the label is easy to understand. There's a negative value for this statement for Norway, while there's a highly positive one of 69 for Italy. Sorry, the last slide referred to the PGI. And what you see here, now we aggregated the perception over all labels. and. The different lines in the slide refers to the different countries. The upper line refers to Italy. And just as we saw before, it had a very positive perception of the PGI label, but not just of that, of most of the other label. It has an above average perception. And perception is especially negative in Norway and Serbia, and that's the two countries which do not belong to the European Union. National labels on average are more positively perceived. So again, we do have considerable differences between national labels. So you do see here, for example, that the Serbian national organic label with respect to the first statement, the label is easy to understand. It's very positive perceived with a value of 78, while the a Norwegian geographical indication label, which we had already before, is only slightly positive perceived. So first conclusions concerning are labels effective in informing consumers? Recognition is high for most of the national labels, what we found in our results, but low for the EU labels. Nevertheless, we need to consider that there's a high heterogeneity between EU labels. Most of those actually who recognize a label use it at least sometimes which shows how important it is really to raise awareness of labels. We have a high heterogeneity in perception of food quality labels. It is more positive for national compared to EU labels, more positive especially in Italy compared to most other countries, especially the non-EU countries. And among EU food quality labels, we found that perception is least positive for the EU organic label. Thus, the question arises, is there a possibility that we can improve the perception of the organic label by a slight modification? So 
can we improve the label? That is what we want to look at uh, next. And to answer this question, we combined uh, data which we obtained from the two samples. And let me show here again the evaluation of the original EU label you saw it before. And we add now the modification. What kind of modification did we do? The only thing what uh, was included in this label was in the first modification that we included the word bio or eco, depending on what is common in the specific country. The second modification was that besides bio and eco, we also included EU certified into this uh, green leaf. And what you can see in this slide, the green line refers to the original label, the blue and red line refers to the modification, and you see that perception increases with respect to all statements which we included. Now what we found, um, and this slide refers again to the original EU organic label, what we did find is that we have different perception between higher and lower educated consumers. So the upper line refers to the higher educated consumers, which have a more positive perception of the EU organic label, so the original EU organic label, than the lower educated respondents, which are, is the darker line, which you see in the slide. So we were interested whether maybe also perception differs or the change in perception differs between those two groups. And this is the line which refers to the changes in perception of the low education. If we look at the modification one, we see that in both groups, actually, perception improves, but this improvement is higher in the group of the low educated consumers. If we move to modification two, we also see that in both groups, we have an improvement in perception. And again, it is this improvement is higher for the lower educated consumer, so the difference is not any more that pronounced. So can we improve label perception by a modification of labels? At the example of the organic label, we could see that a slight modification of the organic label is effective in improving consumers' perception. This, in fact, holds for both tested modifications. However, the effect of label modification is especially pronounced for modification one and stronger for those respondents that are less educated. So what can we learn from that? So what we can say is that consumers, or at least segments of consumers, care for process standards that are not easy to verify at the point of sale. So food quality labels indeed backed up by quality standard and third party controlled are an essential means of communicating those food products and process characteristics. Thereby, they aim at reducing information asymmetry on the side of consumers and support an informed choice. However, such labels can only serve its purpose if they are recognized, understood, and trusted by consumers. Our results indicate that this is only the case to a rather limited extent, especially for the EU quality labels. So if you think about policy implications, one option could be to have well-designed communication campaigns. They could serve as a tool to raise consumer awareness of EU quality labels. Particular for labels such as the EU organic one, which is far from self-explanatory, a modification should be considered. It has the potential to increase consumers' understanding and trust in the label, and it seems especially supportive for lower educated consumers. So Strength to Food is a project where many academic and non-academic institutions are involved. You see the logos of those. And at this point, I just say thank you, and your questions are welcome. Thank you, Monica. So let's start with the questions. We've got uh, two questions which are practical questions. So about if it's possible to have the slides of the webinar and to download the presentation. So I'll pass on to Xinghua to answer those. 
So um, we ensure that all participants or viewers, they are going to receive a video. And we are happy to share our slides. So we, are, we will send the, our slides to your registered email. Thank you. Let's have a look at some of the other questions which we've got. So the first question we have relates to the German bio label and why is recognition so high but the EU label is much lower? I think this has a lot to do with the fact that there's been quite a bit of advertisement for the German bio label when it was first introduced in 2001. So we need to see this advertisement as a reason for this much a higher recognition and I would also say perception. The second thing is the bio label is much more self-explanatory compared to the EU leaf. So this is, in my view, a second point which can explain it. And a third important issue certainly is also the time. And we need to consider that the German bio label has been on the market since 2001, while the EU uh, green leaf, the EU organic label, has been introduced in 2010. However, I think the first two issues are of extreme importance, and this has been also one of the policy recommendations. If you want these labels to really inform consumers, you need to do also some kind of advertisement for that labels. Thank you. So let's move on to our next question, which we have about the modification. So if you could just go through what was the nature of the modification and why that was the case. Green leaf, the EU organic uh, logo, does not include any kind of words. So it could stand for many different things and not just for organic. And uh, we just felt if we just include this little word, maybe... That would help especially those consumers who are maybe not so much involved in these issues. And nevertheless, it could motivate those consumers then also to, yeah, first of all, to recognize the products and then also decide once in a while to buy products which are carrying this kind of logo. So we, in one case, included bio as a means to make it easier understandable. And the second modification, EU certified, was included as we became aware in the first survey that people were not even aware of the fact that this green leaf logo covers standards which are certified by the EU, so that it's a EU certified label. So we were thinking if we include that, it would in increase the trust in the label. So that was the reason why we included both. We were a bit surprised that actually the second label modification was not as well perceived as the first one. Thank you. So our next question relates to the number of participants. As I mentioned before, we had seven countries included in the study, and in each country we had in both surveys 800 uh, participants. So taking both surveys together, it were 1,600 1, participants per country which uh, were included in the study. Okay, so our next question relates to, was the organic label evaluated on a product label? So was it in combination with reference to organic or bio or eco in the product name? So when people were doing their evaluations? Uh, no, that's indeed not the case. When we did this best worth scaling experiment, trying to investigate the relevance of different product attributes, we in fact referred to a specific product. Like, as I mentioned before, there was an in-depth analysis with respect to cheese, but we also covered a lot of other uh, product categories, but then not for all countries. And regarding the perception of the EU organic label or also the other labels which we investigated, they were not investigated in combination with a specific product. So we were more interested in the general perception uh, of of the label and not product specific. So we don't do know from this first part of our analysis that um, 
specific product characteristics have a different, um, different importance for consumers depending on the product we look at. Thank you. So our next question concerns, why do you think that the label modification was more successful than the existing label? The main point actually is that present EU organic label does not necessarily speak for itself. So you don't have a hint that this really refers, I mean, it's green, so it, you might assume it has something to do with natural, but it doesn't tell you that it is an organic product. And putting that word be or echo onto this uh, label it just eases the understanding. So we very much think that this is the main reason. If you compare it, for example, to the German organic label, there we do have the word bio on it. And um, it, it just, giving the large number of labels which are out there in the market, uh, we should make it easy for consumers to identify what a label actually refers to. And with these little kind of supportive elements, we might really improve label understanding and then help also consumers to make an informed choice. So thank you. Our next question concerns, did the study include elements regarding the uh, French Label Rouge label? Yes, in fact, this label was included in our study. France decided for two national labels. One of them was Label Rouge. The other one was Organic Label, which in fact has a slightly higher standard as the EU Organic Label. So yes, it was included. And if I may ex extend this answer a little bit, if we look at the national and regional labels we included, it covered a breadth of different elements. So there were a number of labels which were similar to the PTI. So Norway decided for kind of a Norwegian PTI label. We had three countries, uh, including a national organic label. We had a number of quality labels. Also, Italy had um, regional quality labels. So we had a number of different uh, national labels included in our analysis. Thank you. So our next question concerns, why use best worth scaling? To answer the question uh, regarding the importance of the 14 attribute, uh, this can be easily done by a uh, likely scale. But the fact is uh, we often find ties uh, among those attributes, so that's why that we conduct the best worth scaling in order to make sure that we will find a complete rank among those 14 attributes. Thank you. And then we've got a question on how is the net agreement score calculated? The, the net, net agreement score is calculated by, for example, for the perception question, we do have a likelihood scale rating rate, uh, from 1 to 5. Then the net agreement score is calculated by taking the frequency of a participant, say rate 5, plus the frequency of the participant at rate 4, minus the frequency of the participant rate 2 and 1, and then divided by the amount, overall amount of sample, and then multiplied by 100. Okay, so I think we've got um, maybe time for just one more question. So uh, we've got a question here about maybe lessons for outside of the EU countries. So do you think that the results will be relevant for those from outside of the EU? I mean, what we do see is that results are country specific. So we cannot speak about uniform results for all EU countries. And I think that's one of the main messages we did find uh, in our analysis. However, what we also found is that we do have groups of consumers which are very similar. So we do believe that looking at other countries, that we probably have also in other countries group of consumers for whom regional and country of origin is of high importance or for whom the more natural aspects are of great importance. And for this reason, it would be interesting indeed to have labels which are helpful in informing consumers. Important is certainly also the kind of trust people do have in different labels and uh, to what extent possibly also if these are national or 
EU labels, to what extent this is actually linked to also the trust in the different institutions of the countries. And uh, we, we have been doing some work on that based on the Strength to Food uh, project and found that uh, this is not independent. So the trust in you do have in different institutions indeed also have feedback effects on the trust in labels. And that's probably something what we are going to find, what we would find would be interesting study to do also in other countries. So we do think there are quite a lot of findings we we got, which would be um, of relevance also for other countries. Thank you. We've got a question here, which is a, a more general question about, do we have an understanding of how consumers acquire information about food? how it differs um, between consumers, so different segments, and um, in terms of their ability or willingness to look for extra information, do we have a, a sort of understanding of that? Maybe also how social media is changing information transfer, and also about what might be the lessons of that for communication tools. So trying to think about how consumers acquire information. In fact, we did not look at this point specifically in these two surveys. However, uh, we did have a qualitative analysis of consumer behavior in the framework of strengths to food, where we went into families and did ethnographic studies. And what we did find is that very often uh, very detailed knowledge with respect to different labels do not exist. And that uh, information is certainly obtained by very different different channels and very often not so much by uh, information which is provided as information, but much more by really, as you mentioned, uh, social media, friends, and these kind of things. And it is more a decision than at the level of the household how can we balance the different requests which are in the family um, regarding taste, which has been also revealed in this in our study, which is most important with regard to financial means, because many of those products are more expensive. We do see that educational campaigns at national levels can be important for really improving knowledge with respect to labels, but we very likely need to use the new media to go into social media indeed to reach all different groups of consumers. Thank you, Monica. I think we're running out of time now. So what we can say is all the remaining questions we'll answer by email. I'd like to thank everyone who's participated and for Professor Hartman for giving the webinar. I hope you found it useful. Um, I'd like to thank the people at UFIC for all their work on technical, um, particularly Carlos. You can subscribe to the Strength to Food newsletter for further updates. So from Bonn, thank you very much and goodbye.